This is Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Inside Badger Football is brought to you by Bell Wealth Services, Welch Funeral Home, Austin Wingfield State Farm, Southern Bank Corp, Southwest Sporting Goods, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Taylor King Law, Pricing Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rupp, Eccles, Thompson, and Kneebone, Certified Public Accountants, Clark County Farm Bureau, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Collection, R&T Dixon Enterprises, Arkadelphia Tire and Outfitters, Patterson Federal Credit Union, Bats and Signs, Sonic of Arkadelphia, Dairy Queen, Pediatrics Plus, Rise Counseling, and Print Media. The host of Inside Badger Football is Chase Hartzell. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Inside Badger Football with Trey Shucker. I'm Chase Hartzell and as always we're joined by Arkadelphia head coach Trey Shucker. Coach Shucker, welcome back. Chase, thanks for having me. Well, the last week with Hot Springs we had a throw that came right down to the wire, but sometimes it's nice to have a nice change of pace and to have a little bit of breathing room. That was the case for the Badgers this past Friday night. Most definitely it is. And um, you know, our kids did a really good job of executing the game plan, taking it to, taking practice, what we, what we work on in practice, taking it to the game field, and going out and, and did a really good job of composing themselves, executing the plays at hand, and, and overall, um, just the results of the, of the game was the execution. Now, we don't have exact stats on time of possession here today, but Texarkana was on the field a lot of that game, but the defense really held firm and held them off the scoreboard all the way till the last minute of the ball game only gave up six points in total and even scored a touchdown themselves. What was it about this defensive performance that allowed them to stay locked in and who really stepped up in this one? I really think that the biggest thing uh, to take away from the defense this week was just the overall pursuit. Our pursuit was better to the ball. Um, we trusted our keys and in-game in adjustments and then we, we just wrapped up and tackled. We did a really good job of getting the ball carried down. And it, you know, when you watch the film, you're gonna see a lot of red jerseys. We were in the red uh, this week um, you're going to see a lot of red jerseys getting to the ball and, and a lot of gang tackles and just doing overall executing the plays really well. Um, just, and that's what we want defensively. You know, our, our whole defensive staff t does a really good job of preparing our kids, preparing our defense for, for games. Uh, our defense, defense coordinator, Coach Kaiser, Chris Kaiser, does a great job. Ben Chandler, Bobby Evans, they get, the, they get our guys prepared really well. And uh, you see it Friday night. They, they took, it to the game, took it to the game field and uh, really executed the game plan. Now, Dr. Root joked about this on our broadcast Friday night, but it, it is true. Arkadelphia could almost qualify for the 5A South playoffs yeah. at this point with three yeah. wins to start off the year. Not only starting off 3-0, and but starting off against a really good conference at a higher classification. What does a start like that mean to this team and to this program? Well, it's huge, and, and we do that on purpose. You know, the, the opponents that we've had, Camden, Hot Springs, Arkansas High, are quality opponents. Um, you know, it's, it's opponents that's really going to prepare us for our conference play. Um, our conference is tough, um, you know, from top to bottom, you've got to bring it every Friday night. And so we wanted to schedule non-conference games that are going to prepare us, you know, environment, um, in-game adjustments, preparation, scheme, um, just athleticism overall, They're just the things that we're going to see in our conference play. So our non-conference games, our non-conference opponents did a really good job of, you know, helping us prepare for conference play. Right. And Texarkana, definitely a good test at Carpenter Haygood Stadium this past week. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the highlights. This was the game against the Arkansas High Razorbacks. So team running out onto the field at Carpenter Haygood Stadium for the second week in a row. And coach, we've had some, you know, some time at Carpenter Haygood Stadium, yeah. a former home of the Badgers, as a result of some last minute preparations being made for the new turf at Badger Stadium. But we should be back next game. Correct? Should be back next game. Um, we enjoyed our time in Carpenter Haygood. Um, went 2-0 in, in the stadium. Probably the last time uh, we'll be able to play in that stadium. Um, but you see us kick, kick in the, uh, starting the game off right there with a really good return. Our, our return unit did a really good job of setting the tone for the first drive. You know, we knew that they were going to come out guns blazing. And they did. They're athletic. Um, they're talented. They're just young. Um, but they were in good position right there for the first couple plays and then put us in tough situations offensively. We just got to make a couple plays here and there. 
Um, we do that, those drives continue, but based off, of, off of what they were giving us, we knew that we just had to step up and make a few plays. And then defensively, we had to get on the field and trust our keys, bring some intensity, bring some, um, you know, get to the ball and tackle well. And we knew that if we could be consistent, that we would have some success. And at this point, Texture Canada had already gotten a huge stop on their own side of the field and drove all the way down the field onto Arkadelphia's side. But we're going to see here a huge defensive stand. What did that mean for the momentum of this game? It was forward? huge. You know, just our offense not being able to, to put the ball in the end zone that first drive. The defense takes the field and gets the ball right back to us. Um, it's huge. And then you see us, uh, our, our, we execute a quick screen to our running back really well, able to get us away from the end zone right there, our own end zone. Um, we call it the yellow zone where we're, you know, from the goal line to the 20 is what we call the yellow zone, trying to get away from that. We did a good job. And then uh, we take a shot. We, we saw an opportunity to take a shot. We just weren't able to hook it up, um, stalled our drive out, and we're giving the ball right back to Arkansas High. Um, not really what we wanted to do. We'd like to, to drive the entire field, get the ball in the end zone, and, and then continue on. But, um, you know, Arkansas High, we knew that they were going to bring some intensity early. They had just come off of their first victory of the season last week, and we knew that we had to withstand it. We had to execute ourselves, and if we could be consistent, we would have some success. So, Arkadelphia getting the ball right back here. Really good return right here by sophomore Jaquavis Purifoy. A very talented sophomore for us. You know, we see him, he comes in on offense and, and gives us a burst of momentum here and there. Just a big playmaker for us. And right here, this was ruled an incompletion, but you see the penalty flag at the end of the play. Texarkana had a problem with penalties there, especially in the first half, especially as we get later into the first half with that second quarter. They did, and overall, we won the, uh, the penalty battle. You know, they had more penalties than we did. I thought we played cleaner, we played cleaner of a game overall. Um, you know, that's something that we'd like to build on moving forward. And then, you know, this next drive right here, we were able to, to hook it up with Latonio. Really good read and pass by Donovan, threw it on time. Um, just overall execution of the play. O-line did a really good job of, of pass protection. And then we were able to make the catch for the touchdown. Brock comes in, puts the PAT in, through the uprights. So it's now 7-0 Arkadelphia and the defense with another chance to get out on the field. But Latonio, second week in a row that we've seen him make a really good touchdown catch in traffic in the end zone. Yes, he's one of those players that um, he can make those tough catches. And, you know, he's got the speed to – to hurt you and get open and so you know he's one of those guys that we've got to keep getting the ball to and finding a way to do finding ways to do that see our defense doing a really good job of putting pressure on the quarterback and then you know in, anytime the ball is out you see red jerseys getting to the ball and wrapping up and tackling you're not seeing many missed tackles um, and that's what we want to take pride in you know our, our being an aggressive defense that gets to the ball you see us wrapping up the ball carrier and and driving them back right there. We, we want to be violent and relentless right there. This one, you know, Jaquavis Purifoy had that big return earlier. Um, you know, that situation, he's, he's a sophomore, he's still, still learning. That situation, probably want a fair catch that one. Um, Donovan doing a really good job here with this drive, getting the ball out of his hands on time, getting the ball, being accurate, and letting his receivers go make plays. And a solid pass play. and. Also adding on a penalty, here's another great play for the Badgers on a great pass from Donovan Witten to Latonio Hughes. Another, another big play right there. Latonio Hughes coming up with a, a big catch. You know, there was a penalty and then really set this next play up for D'Angelo Buckley. Um, got him out of the backfield. Nobody, was, nobody went with him, so Donovan was able to find him quick. Got in the end zone. PAT is good. And this is something that Arkadelphia has done very well for several years, but excellent kick coverage in this game, too. A lot of drives started out with the Razorbacks inside their own 20-yard line. Yes, and Ben Chandler is our special teams coordinator. He, he handles all of our special teams and uh, does a really good job of, of scheming our opponents on our kickoff unit, getting our kickoff unit prepared for the game. And then we've got some really good players over there that's going to really 
do a good job of running, getting down the field and covering down. We take pride in, in that kickoff unit, getting down the field and, and tackling and, and getting the ball carrier down, the returner down inside the 20. Big play right here, big uh, punt block by Caden Brown. Um, and then you see us, Marvion Berry, I believe, is the one that jumps on it in the end zone for the touchdown. Big play right there. Anytime we can, we can score on defense or in our special teams, it's huge for us. Those situations create a lot of momentum for us. And then you see us right there. Um, we get a penalty on the, on the PAT try. We get it moved forwards and we go for two for the, for, and we, we were able to convert the two point conversion. Right there, an interception from Kelvin Milton, his yeah. third of the year in just three games. He's, he's done a great job of being in the right spot, you know, trusting his, where he's supposed to be, reading the, the plays and getting to the ball and, and really doing a good job playing the ball in the air. Still seeing some good pressure here from Texas Canada, though, up front. The 5A South has some fine defensive lines, but right here, Arkadelphia able to take advantage of an opening up the middle, and Kyle Reed with his first touchdown of the night. Yes, up front did a great job of maintaining their blocks. We got a really good push on the front line, and Kyle took it to the, to the, re the rest of the way. And then, uh, you know, we were able to onside kick it. You know, just a big scrum for the ball there. Miraculous recover on the seven yard line, puts, a, puts our offense in a good position to score. And then we we're able to find D'Angelo, gets us closer. And then we we're able to get, move the puck a little bit and find Trip Campbell right there in the back of the end zone. Overall, really good execution by our offense as the game got moving forward, you know, progressed through the game. Um, I felt like we got stronger as the game progressed. And it was incredible because in the second quarter alone, Arkadelphia scored 35 points in the course of just eight minutes. Yeah. Uh, it happened really fast. You know, we see our, our cover down unit, our kickoff unit getting, getting tackles inside the 20 again. Uh, defense does a really good job of forcing the offense to get off the field and punt. Um, you know, our defense is really, really strong right now, playing very, very well. This is right before the half. And then a big play by Kyle. We, we hand it to him, and our O-line did a really good job, um, especially progressing through the night. Our O-line did a really good job in, a, in the run game of controlling the line of scrimmage, opening up some rushing lanes for our, our running backs. And Kyle did a really good job of getting quick to the, to the hole, getting quick to his aiming point, fast through the hole, and then finishing it off, um, finish off the run in the end zone. See, our, our kickoff unit is really, really fast. We've got some really good players on our kickoff unit covering down again inside the 20. You see all the red jerseys getting to the ball here. We've got the entire defense there. We take, that's what we take pride in. I know it's a big game for, for Arkansas High, but we've got all, our, all the players at the ball. So and not only are we getting to the ball, we're being aggressive with our tackles and how, how violent we are when we get there. Um, that's, that's one thing that Coach Kai is really proud of. Our defense coordinator um, takes pride in that. And that's the type of defense he wants. And our guys are really taking that to heart. And uh, you see us, we're getting stronger as the game's progressing as well. We're able to get the next group in on offense and defense later in the game, in the second half. Um, anytime we have an opportunity to do that, it's big for our guys to in their progression as a player in general to get those guys Friday night reps. Yes, we've got JV games, but at any time that we've got an opportunity to get um, some younger guys in in the game, that's huge for their progression, just to feel the Friday night, um, just go through the game day rituals of, of game day Friday nights. And then once they're in Friday night, feeling the atmosphere and just the overall execution of the, of the plays and, and seeing that play get called and then getting lined up and going and doing it is just, you know, there's nothing like it. So the final score in that one was Arkadelphia 49, Texarkana 6. And if it seemed like there were very few second half highlights, that's because there were. Because if you look at the first half, there were nearly 100 plays or so in that first half. But then with the good sportsman rule being enforced with Arkadelphia's 42 nothing lead in the second half, 
only about 20 plays from scrimmage total. Yeah, the second half went really, really fast. And, you know, that, that's just one thing with the, the good sportsmanship role. Um, once that clock starts rolling, it, it happens fast. And, and we try to do the best we can to get everybody in the game and, and get everybody reps. You know, we didn't have many reps that second half. Just like you said, we think we're in the 20s and, and number of plays on offense and defense. We only got one offensive series in the whole second half. And so it, it's, it's tough to get everybody in. That's one thing that we try to do in that situation. Um, and, you know, yes, we've got the JV games on our schedule, but if any, if, if at possible at all, we'd like to get everybody in the game. And we talked about the limited opportunities that Arkadelphia had on offense in this game because not only did Texarkana control time of possession, but also you factor in the good sportsman rule, less than 300 total yards of offense yeah. in the game, but still Arkadelphia able to capitalize on the opportunities that they got in short fields and also the defense credit them for creating opportunities for those short fields. Absolutely, and that's the thing is, um, you know, the biggest stat of the game is, is the score, right? Um, it's not really about, you know, total offensive yards or, or all that. It's just really about a good team win, um, and that's really what it was. And, you know, our, our special teams did a really good job putting our offense in good field position. Defense did the same thing. Defense did a really good job of, of getting their offense off the field and helping us out with field position. So in those situations, yeah, if, if the offense is executing, on short field position, you're not going to have a lot of yards, and that's fine by me. You know, the overall stat of the game, uh, getting the win is really what matters. And we're about to unveil the players of the week here in just a moment. Before we do that, Coach, let's just talk about it one more time. We alluded to it in the video package, but this was Arkadelphia's second game at Carpenter Haygood Stadium and a visit that we weren't expecting heading into the season, yeah. but really a unique opportunity to get to play, not only in a historic environment for Arkadelphia football, but also to give some of your guys a chance to play and what's a college environment, really? Sure, and, and that was huge for us. It was a really cool experience. Uh, our team, our coaches, I thought our fans did a really, really good job of responding to that. Showed up for the game, created a really good home environment for us, even though we weren't in our own stadium, um, which ultimately kind of created that college environment for our players and our team and, and the game in general. And uh, it was just a really cool experience getting to do that. And, uh, you know, can't thank Henderson State enough and Sean Jones and Scott Maxfield and others. There's more involved in that, but um, just a really good job overall um, by our team going in there. Went 2-0 and in the stadium. It was a fun time. And just a little side note too, but it's kind of a nice opportunity to get to try and play on a new turf because Arkadelphia is going to be doing that here in just a few weeks, yeah. but getting to test out on a new one, a similar new surface at Geoservices Field at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. Badgers played in the second and third game ever played on that turf. That, yeah, and it's it's just really cool. Um, yeah, we're excited to get on our own field, and, and it will be done this week, and we're excited to get out there and practice and eventually play. Um, but, you know, that's the, we're going to play on multiple brand-new fields this year, and, and uh, you know, that was one of them. A uh, really cool experience getting to do it. All right, well, I think we've built up the anticipation enough now. I think it's time to unveil the Badger Players of the Week from a huge win for Arkadelphia. Our offensive player of the week was sophomore running back Kyle Reed. Rushed four times for 64 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, had one reception for 52 yards and a touchdown. Three touchdowns overall in the night. Um, didn't touch the ball just a, a lot every time he did. Um, seemed like he was, he was getting a touchdown. Just a really, really good night overall for Kyle. Coming in there and, you know, not only did he come in towards in the second half, but, you know, two of those touchdowns were in the first half against uh, against the ones. So that was a really good night by him. Defensively, uh, junior linebacker Chase Vandelborg was our defensive player of the week. Ch Chase is having a great season overall. You know, he's one of those that could have potentially got it in other weeks, but um, Friday night was his, you know, biggest night overall. Had seven tackles, two for a loss. Um, he's all over the field making plays. If he's not, you know, if he's not making the tackle, he's at the ball every single play, doing a really good job at the linebacker position for us. Special teams player of the game was junior defensive lineman Caden Brown. He's the one that got the, the punt block for the touchdown. He's the one that, that blocked it. And then also on a couple of the other uh, punt returns, he's doing a really good job of getting blocks down the field. Um, so our special teams player, Caden Brown. And then our Badger Spirit Award, uh, senior running back Alan Buckley. He's a senior on our team, does everything he's supposed to do. Um, he's one of those guys that's just a pleasure to get to coach, um, shows up with a positive attitude every single day. And then on Friday, you know, game day, he's in there at 7.30 in the morning. He's hanging up everybody's locker in their, in their lockers. I don't know if anybody on the team knows that, but um, 
when the players arrive, they've got their jersey in their locker because Big Al is, is doing that. And, and then after the game, he's in there helping us out, uh, helping clean up the locker room and p get stuff off the field and doing all these different things that you know, nobody's asked him to do. And that's really what the Badger Spirit Award is about, um, putting others before yourself. Perfect embodiment of that Badger Spirit that you mentioned, Coach. And that spirit paid off this week, not only for him, but for the entire team as well in a huge win. And now we're going to take a look at some of the other scores from around the conference. As it was a good week for the 7-4A, we'll go through the scores quickly. Arkadelphia 49 and Arkansas High 6 was the score in that one. Nashville with another win over a good opponent in the 5A South in the form of the Queen, 50-21. Malvern and Lakeside, we've seen that 5A South 7-4A combination quite a bit this week. Malvern picking up a 20-point win over the Rams. Yeah, I think that was the most impressive win, uh, you know, of the conference uh, Friday night Lakeside, you know, historically they're a very, very good football team, especially in their conference. They've won their conference uh, many times, and, you know, that was a really good win for Malvern. And then you have Ashdown taking on Hope, another huge win there against, yeah. again, a 5A South opponent. And then the two new entries into the conference, Mina and Waldron, both picking up victories. Mina taking down Lincoln by a field goal, and then Waldron beating Falk by a score of 45-30. to 30. Yeah, just overall the conference did a really good job of representing themselves as well as our conference, and it, it's going to shake out to be a really tough conference play season, and we're excited for it. Um, it's always a fun time on Friday nights and during conference play. And we're going to allude to this in just a minute too, but we're going to take a look at the standings first. Um, Arkadelphia, Ashdown, and Malvern all finished the non-conference schedule 3-0. and in fact, Rex Nelson on his high school scoreboard show voted them as the top three teams in 4A, referring to the 7-4A as something that we've heard a few times, and that's really that this is the SEC West of 4A football. But also, looking down the board, everybody finished with a winning record. You yes. had Nina, Nashville, and Waldron all winning two games as well. Yes, I mean, I'd like to see what other conferences are, but going 15-3 and three in non-conference play for our conference, that's huge. You know, that represents our conference really well. Um, the, the, the programs in our conference did a good job of representing themselves. All, just like you said, all, all teams finished with a winning record. As a conference going 15-3 and three in non-conference play, I mean, that's pretty good. And not only that, but to do it against quality opponents quality. as well, because you look at the strength of schedule, it wasn't the easiest strength of no. schedule either. You had teams from the 5A, you had some of the best teams in the lower classification in the 3A, also some of the best that the 4A had to offer as well. So really just a strong showing throughout for the conference. It really is, and just like you said, it's a really good mixture of teams. Um, you know, it's not because we're playing weak teams. We're playing quality opponents um, that really do a good job of preparing and, and are good football programs. And across the conference, we're playing good teams, and so really represents our conference well. All right, so now we'll take a look ahead because for Arkadelphia, there won't be a game this next week. This is the bye week per usual, but there are going to be some matchups, as you see right here. Ashdown getting a good non-conference opportunity out in Oklahoma. Malvern also going to Hernando, Mississippi. And then you have another Oklahoma matchup for Mina. Nashville's going to be playing Charleston, one of the best teams in the 3A over the last decade or so. And then Waldron and Mansfield. Arkadelphia, the lone team this week with an open week, but a lot of good opportunities for 4A7 teams across the board. It really is. You know, everybody's done a really good job up to this point. I would expect another big week for our conference and, and – another winning record overall. And so that next game will be on September 23rd for Arkadelphia at 7 o'clock at Scrapper Stadium taking on Nashville, who will be playing yet another game. That'll be their fifth week in a row with a game. So it should be a f an interesting matchup and a fun matchup, too, between two teams that have a lot of history together at the top of the conference. It really it will be a, a really good game. Um, you know, Nashville, they're going to be prepared. They're going to be battle-tested already. Just like you said, they're gonna, it's their fifth game. Um, and they're going to be ready for us, and, and we've got to do a really good job of preparing and being ready as well. We've got to play well on the road, and that's something that um, we've only had one road game up to this point. I know we've not been in our own stadium, but we only had one road game, and good football teams, they went on the road, and so that'll be a good test for us. So a good test for the Badgers, and we won't have a show next week as a result of the bye week, but before we go, Coach, just a couple things to break down. Um, we really haven't gotten to talk much about the coaching staff as a whole because – there are a lot of familiar faces, but as we said, you know, we were talking about it before the show, you see a lot of familiar faces, but maybe in new places that they weren't last year, or maybe some returning faces as well. And I think you alluded to some of them in the highlights. Yeah, you know, our defense coordinator, Chris Kaiser, 
Um, he came back to us. Um, we're very lucky to have him, very happy to have him. He does a great job with our defense. He was here before and, you know, was part of the multiple state championship teams. Um, so we're happy to have him back. We, we got a new wide receivers coach in Benson Jordan. Um, we actually hired him from Arkansas High. Was, you know, he was able to coach college football a little bit here and there. Um, played here in town at OBU. Um, just really good overall hire by him. We're happy to, and lucky to have him as well. And then on our junior high staff, we've got Anthony Jenkins. He's our offense coordinator of our junior high. He's a Badger alum. And we've also got Preston Crowder. And so both of those guys are going to be on the offensive side of the ball. Preston's coaching wide receivers for our junior high. Both of them are, all, are Badger alums. We're lucky to have those guys. We're happy to have those guys here. Um, it's always good to have a Badger alum on staff. You know, those guys, they know what it's like. Uh, they know the expectation. Uh, they're really good coaches. They make good uh, connections with the, the players and the, and the students in our community, in our, in our school. Um, they know what it's like to go through our school district. And there's just a, a little extra pride there whenever you, you work at the place that, and you coach these kids and you, you wear the same logo that you did whenever you're going through high school and junior high. And um, those guys are already plugged into, into the community. Um, just really good. We're very happy to have the coaches that we've got. We've got a phenomenal staff. Our, our staff does a really good job of making positive connections and, and relationships with our players and students. And what you just said really speaks to the state of the program, not only the success that the programs have, but the pride that the program has starting all the way back in junior high. Speaking of junior high, how is the junior high team doing? Junior high is, is improving. Um, we've, we, we schedule our non-conference the same way as we do in high school. We schedule those bigger opponents. We played Camden, Hot Springs, and then Lakeside. And so our junior high is improving through the, through the uh, non-conference schedule. Um, we've, we've seen some tough talent, and we're excited to get into conference season as well. And I've heard they got a fun opportunity again this week to try and, you know, go out there and get some experience as well. Yeah, so this week we're going to play Malvern um, at home. They're going to be the first game in Badger Stadium on the new turf. And so it, it'll be exciting to see those guys get out there and see what they can do. Start of a new era at Badger Stadium. And the Badgers will be back in a few weeks. September 30th, homecoming night for the Badgers. That'll be the next home yeah. game. But before that, another exciting matchup in a couple weeks against Nashville. Yes, and um, that's going to be a big game for us to start the new, new season. You know, we're going to put the non-conference season behind us. And we talk about, hey, it's a new season. It's, it's everybody's zero and zero. Um, and so anything can happen in conference play. You've got to bring it every Friday night. And that's just the conference that we play in. We, we saw the, the scores of the non-conference season, um, you know, 15 and three overall and, and moving into conference play. It's going to be a big, big season. You've got to be prepared. Um, there's going to be a lot of big games. There'll be some, some upsets along the way, I'm sure. You'll see it throughout the conference. Um, it's just the way the conference is every year, and anything can happen any Friday night. Well, that marks the end of a very successful non-conference schedule for Arkadelphia. 3-0 and to start out the year, and in a couple weeks we will see the kickoff of the new conference schedule. As we mentioned a few moments ago, that game will take place on September 23rd at 7 p.m. at Scrapper Stadium. You can catch that game on ArkadelphiaBadgerTV.com. One more reminder, we will not be having an episode next week as this is the bye week for the Badgers. Some well-earned rest after a good showing against the 5A South coach. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we're going to do a really good job of spending this week to focus on ourselves and improve on some areas that we, we felt like were a little weak. Um, so it's really good to have this, this off week going into conference to really focus on ourselves and, and treat it as almost like not a start over, but just a, a reboot per se. And, um, you know, our kids in the past have done a really good job of handling it. Uh, it shows maturity on, on a team. Um, you know, immature teams aren't able to handle it that, that well. You know, you'll have uh, players missing practice and not taking practice as serious. But our kids have done a really good job in the past, and we expect it again this, this week um, to show maturity, professionalism, and, and get to practice uh, and get to practice with an attitude to get better and get, you know, have fun and compete. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. Coach, thanks again for joining us. Thank you again. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Inside Badger Football is brought to you by Bell Wealth Services, Welch Funeral Home, Austin Wingfield State Farm, Southern Bank Corp, Southwest Sporting Goods, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Taylor King Law, Pricing Company, 
Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Eccles, Thompson, and Kneebone, certified public accountants. Clark County Farm Bureau. South Central Connect. Java Primo. Southwest Auto Collection. R&T Dixon Enterprises. Arkadelphia Tire and Outfitters. Patterson Federal Credit Union. Batson Signs. Sonic of Arkadelphia. Dairy Queen. Pediatrics Plus. Rise Counseling. And Print Mania. Inside Badger Football is produced weekly by the Washita Baptist University, Rogers Department of Communications, and the Washita Sports Digital Network.